Yeah, I'm pleased to welcome you to this webinar on Zendoodle, an initiative of the Jamati Institutions of Canada. My name is Munira Jessa. I'm a member on the Council for the Prairies in Canada, and I will be your moderator for today. This webinar will be one hour long. Please get yourself a sheet of paper and a pen or a marker, something like this and something like this. We've also provided a workbook that you can refer to which is located under the handouts button on the control panel on the right. Our instructor will give us an overview of Zen doodling and guide us through an interactive session. During this session, please submit your questions and comments by clicking on the gray question mark on the right side of your screen. Today's instructor is Shamia Jaffer. Shamia is a digital marketing consultant and a graduate of the University of Western Ontario. She is the social media lead for the Ismaili Prairies and is a self-taught illustrator and artist. She has commissioned several pieces and murals. Look, look for her work online at Art by Shamia. In today's webinar, she will walk us through Zen doodling and will talk through how any of us can do it, in particular, how we can use this art form to promote mindfulness, fun and relaxation, and to help us manage during these challenging times. Welcome, Shamia. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Manira. And um, hi, everyone, Yali Medet. Thank you so much for making it to this session. Um, I'm going to get started with a few things. Um, first things first, what you'll need for this workshop. As Manira said, paper, pen, pencil, whatever you're comfortable with. And then secondly, an open mind and a positive attitude. If if you're not positive, you're not going to be able to do this. And um, I want you to just not care about the outcome and just have fun. Don't have any expectations and only relaxation and fun. So we'll jump right into doodling. Um, um, what is Zen Doodle? So if you've ever found yourself aimlessly drawing during a class or a meeting, um, you know, even during a call, then you've been Zen doodling all along and you just haven't known it. So Zen doodle is the art of drawing a series of patterns and shapes and turning them into intricate designs. So this is supposed to be fun, stress relieving, relaxing um, and creative. So as I said before, let go of all expectations and don't limit yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people, just have an open mind and be in the moment and really, really enjoy yourself. So you're going to ask me, how does this help me, especially at a time like this? And what I will say to you um, is how it's helped me. So whenever I've been stressed out or have felt anxious, this is something that's anchored me, um, given me a lot of focus or even a little bit of a break. So I really hope that you can find the same thing that I found in this um, because it's something that gives me a lot of joy and happiness every single day. So I hope it does the same for you during this session um, and even after this session. So we'll get started with a few activities. Um, I'll get you, um, I'll give you like a minute or so to have everything ready. Um, but we're going to start with some warm up exercises um, and then get into drawing your very first Zen doodle. So I'll give you a minute for that. Um, but in that time, Manira, if you had any questions to ask me um, that might have come in, I'm happy to answer those. Sure, Shamia, we've got already, I think people are really excited and we've already got some questions coming in. So the first question is that, um, how can I become a better artist? I think, um, Everyone is an artist, but um, practice and patience are two things that I recommend for everyone. Um, you know, you will find that you will improve with time. If you keep at it, you know, practice every day, even for 15 minutes, um, you know, those ideas will flow better to your head. Um, but also seek inspiration from things around you. Um, I take a lot of inspiration from nature, um, walking around, whether it's by the beach or going to the mountains while I was in Calgary. 
um, but also things around me, um, you know, buildings, architecture, even patterns on your clothes, floral designs, uh, you know, take note of those things. But really, I think practice and patience are the two things you need the most. So Shamia, you're describing so, two things that I'm not very good at, is practice and patience. So that's really great for you to highlight that for us. Uh, would you like any more questions or you wanna get started? I think we'll just get started. Um, so I'm hoping all of you have your pens and papers ready to go. So we're just going to do a few warm up exercises, um, you know, just to make the most out of this drawing session and equip you with the skills you need to be able to do this in your own time without my guidance as well. Um, so again, clear mind, no rules, no expectations, just focus on the idea of self-expression um, and formulate that. Um, you know, express that on your piece of paper. So we're going to start with a simple exercise where we're just going to start with some lines. So we're just going to draw some lines on our piece of paper. So I'm just going to draw straight lines consistently all over my paper. So straight lines, you don't need a ruler. If your line is a bit squiggly, don't worry about that. Um, just keep going. This is more to warm up your hand um, than your creative skills. So we've done some straight lines. Um, I like doing some squiggly lines as well. So, you know, if you wanna do fat squiggles, something like this, or even thinner squiggles, kind of look like noodles. Um, we can do zigzags. So, just focus on the flow of your pen and just get, get all that energy out onto the paper. Don't worry about it looking nice or pretty. Just draw those lines. So back to the straight lines. And then let's draw some vertical lines. Um, let me know if I'm going too quickly. Um, just comment in your chat box and Munira will let me know. So those are some vertical lines. And then let's draw some more lines between those lines. Make them look like ladders. So this is just, again, just to warm up your hands. We'll be using a lot of lines uh, later on, but try different sorts of lines. Try doing some curves and um, spirals like that. Just random ones. It can be anywhere on the page. Now back to the waves. We can add some more lines in between those. Shamia, while you're providing that instruction, I'm just going to advise the audience on the webinar that we do have two screens that Shamia is showing. One is uh, uh, de focused on her page and demonstrating uh, how the artwork, and the other one is, is showing Shamia's video. So if, if people on the webinar can't see the two screens, uh, do some adjustment on your end so that you can hopefully see both videos going. Yeah, thanks for that, Munira. Um... There are two screens going, so one is my face. I'm not sure which one you can see, but I am drawing as well. So Shamia, while you're drawing, I've got another question for you. Is that, yeah, um, sure. where can people find inspiration in their doodles? I think, um, like I was talking about before, you can find inspiration in nature, in things around you. Um, I think once you're introduced to this world, of zen doodling um, and just art you start seeing patterns and shapes everywhere um, places you didn't see before 
Um, so whether that's on your tablecloth or your curtains or your clothes, um, but to really um, get that inspiration, I think nature is the best place. Um, you know, you look at the flowers, you look at the mountains, you look at the sky. Um, there are so many things um, that we get to see every day that should be our inspiration. And um, I'm sure at a time like this, some people might be taking walks or just um, really taking that time for themselves. Um, and there's no better time to explore something like this. So I hope all of you can now see both screens. Um, but we'll get started on the next warm-up exercise. So we've already explored lines, but now let's go into drawing some shapes. So, you know, the basic shapes that we all learned um, in primary school when we first learned about shapes. So I'm just going to get started with a circle. Draw different size circles. all over my page you know no pattern just just concentrating on drawing those shapes so we've done some some circles let's do some triangles you know let's do some different size triangles let's do some skinny triangles And if you want to get started on an, another shape, go for it. Kind of like triangles because they remind me of the mountains. And um, I lived in Calgary for a bit, so I spent a lot of time going to Banff. Um, so every time I draw triangles, I just think of the mountains. Um, let's do some squares or rectangles, however they turn out. Again, you're using lines here. Um, don't worry if you don't if your lines aren't straight or if they don't um, match, but just um, keep drawing. Maybe we'll do some diamonds. Well, Shamia, we do know that diamonds are your best friend. <laughs> A uh, girl's uh, best friend, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Shamia, as you're as you're showing us all of this, um, we're getting a few technical questions. So, is there a particular type of pen that you recommend uh, for this type of doodling? Um, not exactly. Um, I think you can use any pen. I'm using a black gel pen right now, um, and it's 0 0.5 millimeters. But you know, you're able to use thinner pens for more detailing later on. And then I have a special artist pen, which is a little thicker, which is 0 0.88, I mean 0 0.8. Um, so, you know, it can be anything you're comfortable with, how you want your doodles to turn out. Do you want them to be more detailed or do you want them to be more bold? Um, you know, do you want to show contrast? So there's no rules, there's no particular pen you need to use or pencil or colors. It's whatever you want it to be. Um, and that's why I said this is an activity with no rules at all. You make all the rules, so feel free to use anything. Thanks, Shamia. You know, I'm not a rule follower, so I certainly appreciate that. <laughs> I definitely know that a little too well. Okay, so we, draw, we drew some diamonds, but I like drawing some stars. Now, I learned how to draw a star like this from my dad when I was maybe three or four, maybe later, and I can't draw stars any other way. But it's a good practice for line work, um, getting those lines and triangles in. Um, we can do some hearts because we all need a little bit of love or lots of love, depending on who you are. And we can still do lines and spirals as we're doing this warm up here right now. So I hope I've given your hand and your fingers a, a good warm up. Um, and we'll move on to the next part of this activity. So what I wanted to explain is how you get intricate designs is by using lines and shapes. So you just combine the lines and shapes to create more complex patterns. Um, and you keep repeating them. 
So they look complicated and they look intricate because of that, but it's quite simple. So let's try do some of our own patterns. So I'm gonna line this off here. I'm gonna draw myself a little box to draw inside. So Monira, can you give me a type of line I should draw? Straight, squiggly, whatever you like. Um, I think you should draw one on an angle that has um, okay. a little bit of inconsistency in it. Okay. Um, and then a shape? Uh, how choose about two a two shapes? Okay, I'm going to choose, as you said, we all like hearts. So we all need love, yes. so a heart, as well as a rectangle. Okay. So I'm going to split up this box and draw some lines. So it's a bit of a squiggly one, but I'm going to draw two thin ones and then continue on here. And split it up a little more. So you can see my lines aren't straight. They are not balanced. They're not even, but that's okay because that, that's how we make patterns and that's how we make designs. Um, and then Manera told me hearts and a rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some more lines. Now, what I'm going to do is in this little section here, I'm actually going to draw some hearts. And you can see the design has already become a little bit more complex. Now you can see my heart's a little lopsided, but that's okay. And we'll just do a circle there. And then I'm gonna do some more lines. Um, I hope you can see. Yep, looking good. And those can double in as your rectangles. And we'll do some lines here too. And we'll go back to the hearts here. Let me, let me see what I can find from these great questions that are coming in. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there, uh, there's a couple questions coming in about resources that were, are available um, for us to support us. And I'm just going to remind participants who may have missed the announcement at the beginning that there is a workbook available in the ha handout section of the, if you look on your toolbar on the side of your screen, there's a section that says handouts and there's a PDF handout there so you can always uh, use that if you can print it off for today or use that in the future. Um, Shami, I know you're demonstrating for us um, you know this freehand drawing today but do you have any okay. uh, thoughts on applying this type of a uh, drawing technique to drawing digitally? Uh, drawing digitally? Yes that's the question. Sorry did I hear that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, a lot of people have gotten into doing digital design and doing these things online um, on their computers or iPads or on Photoshop. And I've personally never tried it, um, but it's a good, I feel like a lot of people do it now. And um, it's easier in the sense, um, you know, you can have a lot of um, different references that you can use on the background, like the technology is quite advanced. Um, it's quite different from using a paper and pen. I'm obviously quite traditional and um, just like my paper and pens too much and I don't usually deviate too much from that. I have tried my hand at digital design, 
But, um, you know, if that's something you're looking to do, definitely look into different tablets and different pens. And there's different softwares that really help you with that. So there's Adobe Draw. There's, um, um, sorry, there's Photoshop. There's a lot of different ones. So I hope that um, answers the question. Yeah, that's excellent. Thanks, Shamia. Um, so I'll go back to this. And I, um, you'll see that for this, I started drawing wavy lines. And then I combined some hearts, some rectangles, and circles to create just this pattern in this box. So something that was so simple um, looks a lot more complex now, but it's just because it's a combination of repetition, different shapes, and um, we can go a step further and learn how to make these designs even more intricate. So one of my favorite things to do is use shapes inside shapes. So for example, I'm gonna move this a bit, but say we have a circle. Sorry, that's a very uh, lopsided circle, but I'm gonna draw a circle within a circle, and then another circle, and then split that up with some lines. And use dots which kind of looks like now a wheel and a pizza um, and different things. But that's the way you can make designs look more intricate. So let's try another circle. Again, another circle within it. But this time we're going to try and do lines, um, horizontal lines this way. So this is definitely something you can use. Um, in complicating patterns and doing some more detailed work. Um, I want to talk about how to add more depth and contrast to your work because now we've just done the simple line work and done the shapes, but let's talk about how we can actually get those designs to really stand out um, among the other patterns. So when we're going to do a Zen looping piece, you'll realize that Sometimes things get lost in lines, but to really make some lines stand out will um, make them thicker or will color inside other shapes, um, you know, color in the background a little bit so that the designs really pop. So let's do a few examples of that. So I'm gonna do, um, let's say, a little leaf. Now that's like half a leaf, but I'm gonna draw that shape inside. I'm going to do a little mini drop droplet inside that and color it in. But I can go back to, you know, um, the lines I had initially drawn and show you that example within these lines. So I'm going to draw little petals between these lines and then little petals inside that and then just draw little lines inside them but they're not thin lines they're thicker lines but you can already see the difference of how they pop compared to the other things on my page. So even this um, wavy line we see here, if I thicken each line, and by thicken I just mean color in between some of those lines, you're already seeing such a difference um, in how it looks between the two and this compared to that. So that's how you add more depth and contrast into your work. Um, if you have any questions about some of the stuff I've sh shown, um, ask away and Munira and I can talk about a few more things before we jump into our uh, first official Zen Doodle.
Shamia, um, that's that's really helpful to show us those techniques. Um, there's a little bit more of a, a general question coming in. Um, one is, can you draw a star for us again? We want to learn how to draw a star. Okay, sure. I can draw a star for you again. So my dad, if he's watching this, will be really happy that I'm using something he taught me a lot of years ago. Um, so this is a five-pointed star. So I'm going to draw a dot here. Draw a line up here to another dot. Draw a, down, a line downwards. Draw another dot here. And then create another dot here. And join those two lines. And then draw another dot here. Join to here. And then finally, that's your star. Um, Excellent. But I guess I draw it quite quickly. But that's what it should look like. Um, I mean, you can even try just draw a star this way. So one half triangle, another half triangle. And these don't look as fun as the other ones, but they kind of look cartoonish. So I'll draw a smiley face in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Th thanks, Shamia. And while we're transitioning to our official Zen Doodle, uh, can you share some thoughts on for yourself, what's the best time in the day that you like to do this type of doodling? Um, I think I could do this all day. I've had days where um, I've done it for like four hours um, and actually hurt my hand. So do not do it for four hours. Um, but definitely take half an hour or one hour of your day, whenever it is suitable for you. It's it's like when you would work out, right? Um, just take that time off and uh, spend it doing something you want to do. So for me, sometimes it's early in the morning or sometimes it's a late afternoon or a late night when I can't sleep or just need that relaxation after a really, really long day to just wind down a little bit um, because even though there's some thinking required, it's still um, relaxing um, and makes me focus on something else and not something that happened through my day or, you know, if someone, if something happened at work or, you know, I'm having a hard time with something or school was hard on that particular day. So this is something I like doing whenever I just need to do it. There's no particular time. So whatever works best for you. Thanks, Shamia. Um, I think for myself, I uh, I like it. Um, in fact, when I'm in really, really long meetings, and now a lot of us are working from home and uh, need to yeah. try to uh, have a little bit of headspace uh, and to try to mm. keep going in working from home. So in between meetings, um, I always like to draw something. Um, and I sometimes share yeah. my artwork with you, and you're very gracious about how great it is. So if we have time at the end, I will share my artwork with the audience, and you yeah. will be blown away. <laughs> uh, Munira do, does draw a lot of good cartoon characters. I will give her that. Um, so before we begin, I do want to show you some Zen doodles. And they've been a lot of years in the making. I've been Zen doodling for maybe six years now. And I have been practicing quite a bit, at least in the last few months. I try and draw every single day. So what you will see are complex pieces of work or just random doodles. Um, but you will get there. Um, so do not be intimidated by them. In fact, I hope that you're inspired by them and um, gives you a creative mindset. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. And this is Simba. Um, we all love the Lion King. So this is one of my favorite ones. And it took me a few hours to do because the details are quite intricate but you can see i am using the same concepts that i showed you and taught you um, so it's shapes within shades uh, shapes um, a lot of contrast um, and then i will show you one of my other favorite ones which is which was a bit of a mindless one and doesn't look like much of a zen doodle but it's just florals and I've just used petals and I've really used the black contrast to really make the flower pop and just some white lines um, 
and I was really inspired by um, some flowers we had growing in the garden. Um, and I'm not really sure what they are called, but I was taking a walk around and I was kind of inspired that day and I just started drawing. So that's what I ended up with. So those were two examples. Um, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of Zen doodles around, but we'll get started on your Zen doodle. So for this activity, what I want you to do is grab a plain piece of paper. Um, if it's lined, it's okay, but just a new sheet of paper where you can start drawing your first Zen doodle. And I want you to draw your handout. So I've already done that myself, but if you wanna take a minute or two and just start doing that, and then we'll get started. So Manira, you can ask me some more questions now. Well, I had to say, Shamia, so um, the, the just a comment coming back about Simba that I'm getting personally on my phone as well as through the chat box is that that is amazing. So well done. And oh, maybe you can you. share it with that, uh, share us that with us again afterward. Um, let me see what else that we've got going on here. Uh, so when when you have done those types of characters, and I think you're going to talk about this with the hand, uh, do you draw the character first and then the Zen doodle within, or do you sort of think it all through in pieces and then um, just bring it together? Um, so the thing about me is I don't use any erasers. Um, so for Simba, I had to do an outline so that he looked like Simba. So I definitely use a pencil and eraser for that. So then after that, it was all ink. I didn't really have a plan. I kind of just went with it. Um, and it took some time because, you know, you're really trying to see where the patterns should go, where everything will work. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just knew I wanted to draw Simba, but then after that, none of it was planned. But, you know, if it helps you to draw an outline first, um, you know, even put down those patterns first, then go for it. You know, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, that That's what this is all about. What you're comfortable with, what, what you want to do. Um, follow your own rules because there's, there's no rules for this. It's what you want to do and what makes you happy. If you, if you want to use that pencil first because you're not sure of yourself, that's okay. You will build up to that level. Um, it's just practice, 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 practice. Awesome. Thanks, Shamia. I think we're ready for, for the next lesson. Okay, so I hope everyone has their hand drawn. Um, I drew this ahead of time so that you didn't have to see me fumble while I drew my hand. Um, so what I want you to do is just draw random lines around this hand. So split it up into little sections, however you'd like. So you can do all the sections for now, or you can start off by doing a little section and then building off that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna draw a little section out here. So it's just a little semi-circle. Um, remember to just use the concept of lines and shapes and patterns and depth that we've talked about. Um, but you know, step by step, start really simple. So we're starting off really simple with this one line here. And then what I like to do is, I like to follow it up with another line here. And during this time, you know, if you want to play your own music um, and just really be Zen, go for it. Um, I usually am listening to music while I'm doing something like this. So, you know, if you feel like that will really help you get into the state you want to be in, um, please do that for sure. Um, think about your breathing, you know, as you're drawing the lines, don't be stressed out, don't hold your breath. Um, just breathe normally, see how the line flows, go with the natural flow. Um, just feel the rhythm of the pen as you're drawing the shapes. Just really get into that mindset um, and allow yourself to be free, to be spontaneous um, and just enjoy yourself. Uh, really, really enjoy yourself. And, you know, if you feel like okay, you're having a difficult time, stand up, take a walk, and then come back. Don't care about anything else around you and just get back to it. So I'm going to um, just section off another bit here. 
and I'm really inspired by florals and um, nature. So a lot of my Zen doodles include those elements, but um, you know, you can add whatever you want. So if you want to draw some flowers, feel free to do that as well. So I'm just going to be drawing. Um, but if you have any questions, um, please ask. Um, you know, if there's new things I'm introducing, I will explain them. But I am starting with just some simple designs on here. Shamia, you continue, but just to let the audience know, there are a lot of requests to see some other examples of your work. So I will show that um, on the screen um, afterward. But for now, we'll give everybody a chance to continue to watch Shamia in action and, and, and give everyone a chance to continue on with their hand zen doodle. I mean, I think based on what you're showing us here, it was really handy to warm up at the beginning because the patterns can get quite intricate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can be as simple as, the, as you want them to be or more complicated as you want them to be. Um, and, you know, if you want to add, if you want to have simple designs, then maybe add complexity with color. I really like working with black and white. That's a personal preference. But if you find that you enjoy using color, then please add that in. Um, you know, for now, maybe do a basic template and then add color in later. Um, some people really, really enjoy working with color and it improves their creativity and, you know, it is more of a stress reliever than drawing itself. So combine the elements that really work for you in this. So you can see I've just drawn those lines and then I've created petals and just drawn smaller petals inside those petals. And then I've done a bit of a floral um, section in the corner there. Thanks for showing us that, that close up, Shamia. We're getting a question that once you start with curved shapes, is it better to stick mm -hmm. to curves or should you start to mix things up with sharper lines? Um, I think it just depends on your, uh, what feels, what comes naturally to you. Uh, there's there's no nothing like all oh, curves look better with sharper lines or if I should continue doing curves. Um, for instance, like I I like using curves a lot. I um, I'm not one for straight lines entirely, um, and I like using that. Um, but you can definitely add sharper lines like that, right there. Um, and then maybe here, I'll show you some more straight lines that we're doing here. Created our little ladder there. Thanks, Shami. As, as you can see, there's no, as you keep going there's no plan. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Continue. Sorry to interrupt you, Shamia. Uh, so as you keep going, we're getting lots of questions, I think, because um, you're, we're doing a hand. Um, lots of questions about Mindy or Henna application. So can you tell us yeah. a little bit about um, how the two connect? I think um, how I started off doing this 
uh, and my aunt and I were talking about this the other day, is how I got into this whole world of Zen doodling and just drawing random shapes and patterns was by doing Mendy designs. As a kid, I loved Mendy. You know, every Kushali would be the first person to just get like their whole hand done with Mendy. And then while I was in school, I just doodle all over my arms. Um, and it was all like Mendy designs, but I didn't really know what it was. Um, so I would say Mendy is a form of Zen doodling, um, but more floral um, Indian um, designs. Um, and I think culture really plays a part in what your designs end up looking like. So um, I grew up in East Africa. So you'll see in some of my Zen doodles that there is um, a Swahili or African element that I try and add. Um, I love Mendy, so that really comes in as well. So it depends who's looking at your work sometimes. Sometimes people have been like, oh, this is so Indian, do you do Mendy design? Or, um, hey, I see elements of this or elements of that. So Mendy is definitely a form of Zen doodling. And as I was saying before, there's really no plan to this. I'm kind of just going in random directions and just going with what I feel like drawing, where I feel like drawing it in different sizes. Um, I will go in later when there's a little more to add in some contrast. But for now, I'm kind of just going with the simple line work um, and adding shapes inside shapes or adding lines inside shapes. Shami, as you're going, we'll give people a bit more time to continue on with with their hand. Um, but I will share yeah. with the audience, and I'll remind afterward that we would love to see your Zen doodles afterward. Um, please uh, feel free to share them with us through our social media accounts, and um, we'd love to showcase um, some of today's Zen doodles or any Zen doodles that you come up with afterward. So. Uh, and as Shamia said, it just uh, anything goes. Um, lots of practice, lots of patience, and we're really looking forward to seeing what people come up with at the end of this session. And um, you know, even if it's not pictures from this session, you know, if it's afterwards when you practice and are more comfortable with showing us that, like, feel free to share that at any time. Um, whether that's on our official channels or even just to me, I would love to see what you come up with. And if you ever have any questions um, and see how you can improve further or take it to the next step, um, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm always happy to help um, and see your work. So you can see I'm kind of completing this finger here. Um, and I'm mostly just doing some line work um, and adding just petals and um, some circles. Okay. 
Shamia, as you, you keep going, I'm just going to remind uh, people that you, um, if you're interested in having a look at some of Shamia's artwork online, uh, you can look for her at um, Art by Shamia, all one word, on Instagram, as well as if you do a Google search, you'll come across Shamia's webpage, where there's lots and lots of really great examples of, of Shamia's artwork, both um, on a small scale as well as a very large scale. Uh, so certainly please check that out, is um, Art by Shamia on Instagram as well as online. Shamia, in your next, uh, in the next blank space that you have there, there's been some requests to demonstrate drawing of petals. So maybe can oh, you show petals. us a little bit more drawing of petals? Yeah, um, we can do some florals and petals. So I'm going to flip this over. So the there's some like basic shapes for petals. So I'll draw them out here. So this one looks like a leaf. This is a drop, and this is just um, half of an oval, I would say. And then you can have a thinner one. So these are the basic ones that I tend to use. Um, there's also this one that kind of looks like a tooth, I want to say. Um, but OK, so we'll try draw a flower right now. So we'll draw a center, which can look like that. And we can add a little dot in there. We're going to take um, this petal and just slowly go around and keep repeating that. And there you have it, a flower. Um, so that's how you do petals. I usually like adding lines inside my petals to make them look a little more complex and have them pop out a little bit more. And then um, we can try another flower too. So this time, this is how I'll do the center. Um, I'll draw little circles around, like so. And then I will take the leaf looking petal and just repeat that around um, don't worry about size just go with it you can see my petals are a little uneven but when everything comes together it, it ends up looking just fine um, and in this i'm just going to add other little petals like this Um, we can do another one as well. So this you'll recognize from a lot of Mendy patterns. And we're adding three lines here. So those are the flowers, but you can also do these petals repeating within lines, right? So just as I had done on the other hand, I'm just going to take this petal and just continuously draw it like this. And then you can add whatever detailing you'd like on that um, and how it fits into your work. So I hope that was helpful. It was a great demonstration. Um, I can show you some leaves while we're at it, actually. So again, same premise. I'm going to draw it that way. I like putting another little leaf inside. Line down the middle. 
and then just lines at an angle. And there you have it. A petal turned into a leaf. You're saying, Shamia, it's easy as that. <laughs> it is as easy as that. See, it's just basic shapes and you just put them together and then it looks so beautiful and you wonder how it happened. Um, but if you just break it apart, it's just a few elements that have come together to make it look whole. Okay. Um, we find it a bit daunting um, trying to get everything correct um, without sort of turning it into individual pieces. So that's really helpful to think through that it is just individual shapes that then come together to form um, something larger or form a pattern. Yeah. Um, you know, the little things count and that's what they make the, that's what makes the big picture. So, you know, if you just take it a step at a time, um, just like in life, it'll all come together. Artwork and philosophy by Shamia. <laughs> Expanding my horizons today. Well, it's interesting that, you know, we just started talking about that because you are getting some questions here um, about faith and does faith manifest in your art pieces? And in particular, do you um, ever focus on uh, Islamic design? Yes, um, actually, that became a really big part of my work um, during Jubilee Arts. So thing is, I started off with Zen doodling, but I transitioned into doing mandalas, which um, are also meditative and they're quite intricate and very, very detailed and require structure, um, but still goes with the same, the same way you Zen doodle. Um, but mandalas have a lot of significance in a lot of different cultures. So it's um, really, really, um, a really big part of Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, you know, you will also see it in um, Islam as well. We just don't realize that that's what it is. So, you know, if you see domes of mosques, um, you know, you may just see these circular patterns in um, different places of worship. And those are mandalas too. So I really became fascinated with them and how, um, you know, they're such a big part of religions and cultures. So when I was working on my Jubilee Arts piece, I really wanted to include that element and I looked up Islamic designs and see how I could add those patterns um, into my work and then, um, you know, added elements of Islamic calligraphy as well into my work. So it's, it's something I'm still learning um, because I find Islamic geometry quite difficult and it requires a lot of focus because, you know, you use a compass and a protractor and it can get quite complicated because you have to learn new patterns and see how the geometry works. Um, and I tried to learn Arabic and then I got busy and I stopped. But it's definitely an element that has started coming into my work, especially after uh, Jubilee Arts. That, that's great. Uh, thanks for, for, um, for reminding us, Shamia. I, I neglected to mention that Shamia did in fact participate in Jubilee Arts, um, and, and you can probably see some of her artwork from that online also. It's funny you mention a compass and a protractor, because um, I might guess that there are people on the line who don't know what that is, uh, because we a lot of us use that in school, and then we might have kept that aside, or uh, we might yeah. not be using it in school anymore. So it's, it's fun to think about these things that we have, uh, that we've used in the past, that, uh, you know, that we can continue to use uh, to support us in, in doing some something different. Yeah, for sure. I didn't think I would be using a compass and protractor every day or, um, you know, trying to learn geometry or stuff that I'd learned in um, grade seven. I learned about perpendicular bisectors and how to find the center of a circle. And I remember having to do that because I I didn't have um, a center point, like I wanted to be really accurate about it. And I actually had to um, learn that all over again. So it's been nice to go back and revisit some of the stuff I learned in school and being like, oh man, 
I actually have to use that today. Um, and I didn't take that seriously um, because I was like, why would I need perpendicular bisectors ever again in my life? But here we are. So you're saying, Shamia, it's not just for architects and engineers, it's also for artists? Yeah, I use quite a bit of math. I mean, it's not complicated math, um, but you know, you have to be aware of like, um, especially with the more detailed work that's more structured, not Zen doodling, because I don't use any tools for that. But you know, um, just making sure the dimensions are right. So it looks aesthetically pleasing and the effects that you're trying to show in the piece are actually shown. That's wonderful. Um, so for all the young people, who think that you're not going to need those geometry skills later on, so you're not going to bother with them. It, at the very least, they can make you into an amazing artist, so please stick with it. <laughs> uh, Shamia, we've been chatting and I've completely lost track of time and we're nearly at the end of our webinar. So I'm going to start with some of our wrap up and I'm going to ask um, my I'm going to ask my helper in the background if he can please demonstrate some of your um, artwork from the websites and from Instagram online um, so hopefully that's okay and we can get that going uh, thank you so uh, i've lost i've lost track of my script because i've been so mesmerized by everything that we're doing here i'm going to oh, turn thanks, my camera Mira. on yeah shamia this is really great thank you so thank you oh here i am again thank so thank you. you for sharing this artwork uh, with us um, I think this has been something that's so been so helpful uh, to take away during this time. You know, you know, all of us have the health and safety of the global Jamaat at mind. Um, you know, the humanity at large. We're very concerned at sort of what's going on. Um, you know. It, for around the world in, in this difficult time. And I think this is a, a really great opportunity for us to, you know, just as you're saying, be a bit more Zen, um, take our minds off of things, but also in a way to make it, you know, creative and potentially effective. And I think what's being demonstrated on the screen there uh, shows us a way, to, uh, a really creative outlet for, uh, for some of this work. So thank you. Um, I'm uncertain. I think we're going to have a, a survey at the end of this webinar and everyone's encouraged to please complete complete that survey. This is a very unique webinar that we've done this time and we would love your feedback on um, how you enjoyed this and, and what we can do uh, to continue to deliver, deliver this type of programming to the Jamaat. Um, we do part thank all participants in the participants today in uh, in the webinar as well as all of the volunteers. We've got an amazing team working in the background to tirelessly bring all of this really great quality information to the Jamaat. Um, very, very different than anything that we've done uh, in the past. So thank you to all of those webinar volunteers. I'm gonna um, ask our team to please put up uh, the information about access. Uh, just a, remember, a reminder to all webinar participants that uh, the access line is available to any Jamaati member who might have questions or who requires assistance at this time. Uh, the contact information is going to be demonstrated on the screen shortly. Uh, and as well, please continue to stay connected with the Jamaati institutions through our digital platforms. This includes the Al-Akbar newsletter, our website, the app, um, and our Facebook and Instagram accounts. And certainly please uh, share your Zen Doodles with us through any of these platforms. Uh, we'd love to see them uh, and, and we can hopefully showcase, uh, showcase your work in some of our, our future uh, publications. A, re a recording of this webinar will be available on the II Canada website within a few days of this broadcast. Um, we have a minute left, so uh, I have to demonstrate it's not my Zen Doodle because I was managing the question and um, doing a little bit of technical stuff in the background, but I promised I'd share a sketch. So here's a sketch. It's not quite a Zen Doodle, but I, I like to keep my promises. So it's a fat Snoopy that became a sne skinny Snoopy. With you some can shooting. do your Zen Doodles inside the Snoopy. Oh, yeah. So maybe for our next webinar, I will demonstrate how my Zen Doodle is now complete. But there's my, my outline for my Zen Doodle. So I hope everybody Thank enjoyed you. today's session. Thank you very much to Shamia. Um, Shamia, I'll let you say the final conclusion and then, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being on this uh, webinar. I'm so happy I could show you a little glimpse into my world and um, teach you a little something. Um, just remember, stay Zen, um, do your thing, just draw those lines carefree, um, and keep safe um, during this time. Um, if you have any questions, always reach out. And I hope you're able to do this um, at your own time as well. So thank you so much. Thanks, Shamia. Thank you, everybody, on the webinar. This concludes uh, today's session. Yali everyone. <laughs>